A verdict for the woman convicted of killing two cyclists. A garage engulfed in flames. And SUU has something big planned for the summer of 2025. You're watching St. George News at 5. Good afternoon, I'm Amy Bennett. The conclusion of the trial for the woman responsible for the deaths of two cyclists in Washington City back in April of 2022 ended on Monday. Cody Blowers brings you further details on the trial. The jury returned a verdict following the six-day trial that was held in 5th District Court that ended Monday evening in the case of Julianne Budge. The driver charged in the death of two cyclists, both brothers that were participating in an annual race in Washington City on April 9th of 2022 along with their two sons that were trailing behind. The trial consisted of a series of witnesses, drug recognition experts, crash investigators, and data collected from the little black box of the SUV. They captured several different data points during the crash. Points that the state contested was evidence that proved that Budge fled the scene after striking the riders, and the expert testimony also proved that the crash was caused by impairment. The defense team put on their own set of experts that came to very different findings. That Budge didn't flee the scene, but was unable to stop when the vehicle lost power upon impact, which caused the brakes to fail, so the vehicle coasted another 1,100 feet from the point of impact. The defense also contended that Budge was not impaired at the time of the crash, and the toxicology report they said indicated that she was taking the medication as prescribed. In the end, prior to deliberations, the jury was given a special verdict form, and instead of the jury finding the defendant guilty of the two second-degree felony charges that were filed following the arrest, the jury found her guilty of two third-degree felony charges of homicide by automobile that included negligence DUI as well as one count of reckless driving and leaving her lane of travel. And the defendant was found not guilty of leaving the scene of an accident causing death. Sentencing is scheduled for March 6th, and until then, Budge remains in custody. Thanks, Cody. Black smoke filled the air after a garage connected to a home near Southern Parkway went up in flames. Maury Kessler has more on the fire and St. George Fire Department's quick response. A structure fire that sent a large black plume of smoke into the sky near the Southern Parkway drew multiple firefighters and onlookers Monday evening. St. George firefighters responded to a house fire on Honeycomb Drive in the White Dome area south of the Fort Pierce Industrial Park around 5 p.m. that had completely engulfed the home's garage. St. George Fire Battalion Chief Rick Nelson shared more detail about the fire at the scene. Uh, when we arrived on scene, smoke flames were coming out of the garage probably 15, 20 feet. Uh, we had a fast attack from our two engine companies uh, knocked the fire down very rapidly. Uh, luckily, we didn't get very much extension into the home. The cause of the fire is currently unknown and under investigation. Thanks, Maury. A rally took place at Utah Tech University on Tuesday in support of the transgender community, and dislike was voiced for a bathroom bill that was just passed by the Utah State Legislature. Here's Chris Reed with more on the protest. With the theme of I'll go with you, a rally was held at Utah Tech Tuesday to support transgender individuals and urge Governor Spencer Cox to veto a recently passed bill that would regulate how transgender individuals can use public bathrooms. At the time of the rally, the bill was on the governor's desk after passing both houses of the state legislature. Attendees include about 75 to 100 students and people from the community who held up signs and waved transgender pride flags as they listened to speakers and musical performances. Among the performers was Aiden Barrick, who is half of the local indie folk rock group, The Mended Hearts Club. Honestly, like, I, it, it is a very real thing that trans people have, is a fear of using the bathroom because we don't want to be assaulted in the bathroom. Um, it's, it's very, very real. Like, I'll, you know, I'll be, I'll be cognizant of how much water I drink throughout my shift at work, so I don't have to use the bathroom often. Barrick's mother, Linda Stay, known locally as a leader for homeless charity Switchpoint, said if people just get to know transgender individuals like her son, they might not be so quick to pass legislation that she says harms them. When people know you and they love you, and they won't vote against you when they understand you. And so it is incredibly courageous for trans people to show up and, and let people know who they are because when, when they know you, they, well, that's our hope is they won't vote against you. On Tuesday, Southern Utah University, Cedar City, and Iron County revealed a major addition to the 2025 summer calendar. 
the Special Olympics Utah Southern Games. This three-year partnership with the Special Olympics Utah and the Show Up Foundation kicks off in June and will showcase over 500 athletes in Olympic caliber venues. This collaborative effort aims to foster connections, spotlight talents, and contribute to the growth of Cedar City sporting scene. St. George News reporter Jeff Richards attended the birthday party of a Paiute County resident who turned 105 years old. Here's Jeff Richards with more on the celebration and the extensive turnout of family members honoring her remarkable life. Longtime Paiute County resident Irva Sudwigs recently celebrated her 105th birthday with dozens of family members gathering for lunch in Cedar City. So my day at home, I like to, after lunch, I like to have a little nap. I'm not gonna have one today. <laughs> <laughs> I just turned 105 years old on the 24th of January. Okay. Irva, who lives in Kingston with her son Bill and his wife Joyce, has outlived both of her husbands and three of her four children. She has more than 150 descendants, including more than 50 great-great-grandchildren. Many of Grandma Irva's family members came up to her to wish her a happy birthday and have their pictures taken with her. A new St. George store is taking the place of the Modern Farm and Artisan Co-op, and it's helping Southern Utah's local artists. Here's Jesse Bang with more on Nature's Edge. As the curtains descend on the cherished Modern Farm and Artisan Co-op, also known as MoFaCo, a new chapter is revealed with the debut of a vibrant store. Nature's Edge, where earth and art collide, is dedicated to featuring the works of local artists, ensuring Southern Utah's creative spirit continues to shine. Store owners Audra and Troy Thompson are here to tell us all about it. We're excited. This store is going to be a compilation of so many things. I, we're nature's edge, we're earth and art collide because we, we've we spent uh, four years cutting rocks, doing jewelry, working uh, with things that come from the earth. And I mean, mother nature, right? Best artist ever was. and so. We wanted to do something that kind of could combine all the things, my jewelry, the rocks we cut, but art too. And, and local artists, I mean, that's kind of the backbone of the community. The Thompson family owns a silversmithing and lapidary business, Dandelion Studios, and they are all about supporting other local artisans and makers in the community. When asked what they're most excited about, Troy Thompson said this. Growth is would probably sum it up. Um, growth for our business, uh, that we've been doing um, growth in the community, watching St. George grow, being a part of that downtown, uh, watching the art community grow, um, having an opportunity to help uh, other artists grow their brand, um, their the awareness of them, um, create something here. So uh, for me, I think that's the most important part. Thank you for watching St. George News at 5. I'm Amy Bennett with St. George News, your number one source for local news. This has been St. George News at 5.